Good morning. Good morning. How about that weather? What a great morning to wake up to. Uh, this morning we will have a small presentation after the sermon. Uh, so you guys are in for a treat. You get a, you get a short, quick sermon. I know some of you may have uh, prayed prayers last night. We won't say which ones were answered, but uh, it'll be a quick quick sermon this morning. So uh, real quick, though, I wanted to say welcome to those who are watching online. We've already had a couple of welcomes, but just to give you an update, uh, we've had uh, when we started the, the live stream only and the services were postponed in the building, we had a very large numbers uh, viewing uh, from home from different mobile devices, and those numbers are still high. We're glad to see so many uh, coming here. We have two services now, but we still have uh, 108 devices viewing in, uh, so we're glad to have that. Just a few states, obviously Oklahoma. We have Texas, Iowa, California, Arizona, and an unknown state. Anytime there's an unknown on there, I always like throwing in that it's possibly from Switzerland because that just sounds cool that we have somebody... Steve's daughter may be viewing from Switzerland at 5 p.m. their time, so uh, we, just, we just assume that's her because it sounds good. Let's be honest. <clears throat> this morning I want to talk about uh, honesty and, and just pose the question, uh, are we being real with God? Are we being honest? Are we truthful with God uh, as far as when it comes to how we live our lives? Uh, sometimes we act like we have uh, everything together. Uh, we act, we come in here and we've got nothing but smiles, uh, warm handshakes, and everything's going well. How are you doing this morning? Great. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine. Couldn't be better. Uh, and although we would love for that to be the truest response we could give each time, uh, it would think it would be safe to say that sometimes those words are forced out. Because that's what we think others want to hear, or that's what we think we have to say. Because we got to put on a face and everything's supposed to be hunky-dory uh, for our entire lives as a Christian, even though we don't read that. It's not promised for us anywhere. Uh, but we think we have to reach some type of a, a status of either worthiness or happiness. We have to try and show uh, how good things are going in order to receive uh, God's blessings or receive His forgiveness. Um, but we know that we need to repent, we need to be washed, we need to live a life devoted uh, to Him as He calls us to do. But do we always repent of everything up front? Are we truthful with God? Or is there, is there full disclosure? Uh, so we are luckily removed from uh, this problem of house hunting, right? You know, we've been in our house now for almost five years. Uh, but when we are, I'm sure everyone can relate to at least some point, uh, you're looking for a house and, and you're going through whatever website you may be going through to look at different listings and uh, you've got certain criteria, whether it be price range or land or square footage or what have you. And there are no photos, but there's a great description. You know, uh, great starter home, warm and cozy, uh, needs a little TLC, uh, just a small fixer-upper, what have you, and you don't want to be swayed and, and, and tricked. You decide, okay, well, we're already viewing some houses. Let's go see this one anyways. And so you go ahead, and when you get there, one of the bedrooms is missing the flooring. All of the rooms may or may not have windows and or walls. And the kitchen and the bathroom are both really nice, but they are sitting right next to each other in the same room. Uh, so those people, when they make those, they're trying to show or present something that would make you want to uh, come and see their house. But when you see the real deal, when you get, when you get in behind those closed doors and behind the descriptions and what they say is going on, we get a little bit more of the truth. So for us, when we think we have to act a certain way or be a certain way because in order to receive Christ's love or His forgiveness, we already have to be at some state of worthiness is simply not what we're told. In fact, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. 
For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And their emphasis there, while we were still sinners, while we were enemies of the cross, His Son was sacrificed on the cross for us. When we mess up, not if. There are many different passages that talk about when we face trials, when we face temptations, and it's always met with a when, because it's not if. We know that those are going to come up. When we mess up, and I'm not just talking about the small mess ups that, you know, right now, if a uh, you, if, one, if, a small, if a younger couple jumps into one of those houses because they just think that's the best one and then they have to hurt, you know, spend the next five, ten years trying to get out of it, uh, you know, that's a little bit of a mix-up. Maybe some people told them not to get the house. You probably shouldn't get it, but of course they knew what was best for them at the time, uh, so they didn't listen to any advice. But um, when those happen, sometimes those are socially acceptable mistakes. It's understood, well, they're just kids. Well, they're just so, well, it was their first house. Those things are okay. I'm talking about the behind closed doors, things that we don't want or think anybody here needs to know or should know or would care to know. What if they knew? And then we end up pulling that same or trying to pull that same wool over God's eyes. But when are we going to start being real with ourselves? And real with God. And it's ironic that we even have to worry or make the choice to be truthful with a God who already knows everything anyways. That opportunity for us to be real is for our spiritual maturity. For us to be upfront with ourselves and truthful with ourselves and truthful with God as well. Whatever we may be dealing with it. And if he already knows the truth, then why do we wrestle with it? We're the ones wrestling and struggling with keeping it in, hiding. I've had family members that had uh, some severe struggles and didn't want anyone to know and, and would spend all of their waking energy trying to keep people from finding out what they were going through. And it was it ended up being a very big struggle. But what's holding us back? Uh, when we have, uh, you know, an, an invitation song, I can definitely say there have been times when I feel like at the end of service, maybe I should come down. Maybe I should confess something or just say what I've been struggling with. Or, you know, this last week has been tough. Or during this whole pandemic thing, it's just things have been so out of whack. I just don't know which way is up. Um, but maybe you find yourself not wanting to do that. Well, they, they, that would look like I might be struggling. Well, yeah, we all are. Some of us just have a better face. Uh, but it reminds me, whenever I was younger in a youth group that I grew up in, uh, the, the, the teens all got really close, uh, and I was one of them. And each year that goes on, I get farther away from that youth group, and it feels interesting. Like when I say I'm a part of a youth group now, I run it, it I feel like I should still be in it sometimes. Nobody make a comment. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, but I reminded of the youth group, and so we would get together, uh, and, and talk about real things. If, if we were struggling, we would be open and honest. Uh, and we knew that we could help each other. We knew that we were not the only one going through this issue. And so uh, that's one thing I love about this congregation is that when something happens, when someone's struggling and they come down front, they're not met with uh, judgmental stares and boos and they're not kicked out. They're met with this family surrounding them with prayers, sometimes with tears, with encouragement and support to help them get through what they're going through. So go back, you know, rewind to the youth group that I was in. Uh, the teens, there was one teen in particular that had some struggles, and this was the first case, and it was unheard of at that congregation. They stepped out and came down front, and everyone, you know, we just were raised. That's just, that's what you do when you just wanted to get saved, and that's all that was there for. And so they stepped out and came down front, and you know, what's, what's, it just seemed odd, we'll say that. And so that started something. So the teens were always there. They, even from the first time, they were never there by themselves. 
the one teen would come down and the whole group of teens would come down with them. And then pretty soon before long, the next time it happened, we'd have a couple of men from the congregation would stepped out. And then before long, people started thinking, hey, maybe I'm not alone. All these other people have problems. I'm not the weirdo. I'm not just singled out. And so what that did was create an opportunity for us to do what we've already been called to do anyways, which is to bear each other's burdens. But we have to confess those. We have to stop putting on a face and get real with ourselves and real with God and confront, confront those things. And what a release to let out what you've been trying to hide and struggle to hide to God. And newsflash, He already knew anyways. He was waiting for you to get real with yourself, to be honest, to confess. God always wants the truth, but maybe I can't handle the truth. Maybe it stops with me. Uh, you can ask anybody, especially my family. I'm not a very big photo guy. Uh, I, I, if I was lucky, I'd get a photo one time, and whatever it is, that's good. That's, what, that's me. Um, but most of the time, uh, these photos, even nowadays with technology, with social media, the photos are doctored up 5, 10, 15 times before they ever hit, hit somebody else's eyes. And... One of the main reasons why I don't particularly care for photos is because they usually appear fake to me. Uh, when I look back at some of the photos we've had from older trips and I think about some childhood photos, <clears throat> I re may remember a big knockdown drag out fight. Well, you always pick the places we get to go. Well, you always, well, I want to go to this place and I want to go to that place. Oh, well, we're standing in front of the St. Louis Arch now. Everybody hush up and smile. Everybody say cheese. <laughs> and then so you're flipping through the book and I see us in front of the arch and I'm thinking, I don't remember the smiles. The smiles lasted about five minutes, and it was, I want to go to the zoo, and I want to do this, and you always do that. I'm hungry. When are we going to eat? Uh, you know, and that's what we do. We, sometimes we come in here, and out in the car, it's, it's chaos, and you know, doors open up, and you come out, and you put the faces on, and you come in, and <clears throat> everything's great. How's it going? Everyone together, cheese, just walking in hand in hand. And that sounds absurd, but sometimes those smiles that we see on social media or even the ones that we see coming in here are hiding some of the worst moods or pains or feelings that are out there. Some are hiding jealousy. Some are hiding rage. Some are hiding infidelity. Some are hiding fear, worry, greed addiction. The list just goes on. But we've gotten so good at putting on a face and not even being real with ourselves. Some of us are pretty good at it. We may have even convinced ourselves almost. But what we're doing when we see other people, we walk in, well, everybody's got a smiling face, so I have to have one on. And this doesn't mean everybody needs to come in next week with frowns on their face. That's not what I'm saying. It's still okay to smile because we have something to smile about. Uh, but we, if, if something is wrong and I say, good morning, how are you doing? And you say, you know, it's just this week hasn't been that great. That's what we should be able to do. That's what we should be comfortable doing. That doesn't mean you have to if it's not true. It just means we should be able to do that. And we have to stop comparing ourselves with other people. Because when we see those pictures that look perfect and great, we're comparing what we know about ourselves to what we don't know about other people. Because when I show someone that picture of us at the St. Louis, Louis Arts that looks like a family of, of seven that's having a great time, all smiles, when you see that, you think, wow, that must have been a good trip. When I see it, I remember, man, that was a horrible afternoon. And so just because you see these smiles on someone else's faces doesn't mean they're not dealing with crippling hurt or anxiety or depression or fear, or pain. We need to trust in God to be who He says He is. And that sounds pretty simple. You know, duh, you kind of want to say. But just one example of what He says that He will do and describes who He is, I want to show us in 1 John chapter 1, in verse 8. Starting there, we read, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our, us our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, plural, that means all of them, the bad ones, the nasty ones that I don't want anybody else to know about. If we confess our sins, who he says he is, is he is faithful and he is just. And Christ died on the cross for us to get to that because we read just a minute ago, while we were sinners, the sacrifice was made. We have to know that He is faithful, and we have to confess. Even those areas that we're falling short, we confess those. Behind the facade, behind the show that we've created for everyone else, you may think there are wounds too deep, feelings or hurts too strong, but our God is stronger. We need to tell him the ugly truth. As some might see on, on Facebook, some of the moms, we need to have the ugly cry with God. Let it all out. Be real and be honest. Because through confession, he's going to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not the ones that we think are acceptable to confess to him. If we truly leave that life and give those things up to him... He will cleanse us. Give Him your doubts, worries, frustrations. Give Him your emotions. The ones you think even He can't handle, give it all up. You may ask, God, I just don't understand why. Maybe it's not the feelings. Maybe it's a storm that you're going through. You know, I just, I'm trying to stay strong through this, whether it's the pandemic. Maybe you, uh, someone, you or a loved one lost a job and laid off. Uh, bad diagnosis, health problems, fill in the blank. God, I just don't understand why. Why me, or maybe even why, if we're going to be honest, why are you letting this happen to me? Maybe that's a question you find yourself having because we don't understand. We think maybe this God's causing this. I want to read in chapter 4 of, of an encounter of a test of faith, chapter 4 of Mark, uh, where we, we read about the disciples and their test of faith, and what they felt like in the moment. In verse 37, it says, A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And, I mean, if we're honest, maybe we've been in those positions before. We're down here praying, looking up, we feel like we're in a storm. God, I'm, I'm following you. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of yours. Don't you care that I'm drowning here? They didn't know that the, why the storm came up. The disciples weren't sure. There's no indication that Jesus created this storm just to give them a test. But nonetheless, they were in a test of faith. Because they were concerned about the why. Why are we in this storm? And why is he sleeping while we're in danger? Reading on in verse 39. He, Jesus, got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. The wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The truth is we want to ask God why, but what we really need to be focusing on is the who. If they had truly understood and fully comprehended who was sleeping on that boat with them and had faith in Him to be who He says He is, maybe they wouldn't be so afraid. And though we go through trials and frustrations, struggles, temptations, God is always going to be who He says He is. And that doesn't mean that the storm is going to pass by easy with just a couple of words or that we're not going to have to patiently endure. But what it means is, is He's always going to be there, faithful, regardless of what we go through. And the who being God, when we trust in Him when we lean on Him and not our own understanding, then we have the peace that passes our own understanding. Philippians chapter 4, 
reading in verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. In everything, in the small problems, in the big problems. The same Jesus who calmed the winds and the storm on the sea is the same one there to help keep and guard our minds and our hearts. That means our thoughts, our emotions are going to be guarded when we get honest with God. When we lean on Him for our every need and not just the, the, the needs that we think we can't handle on our own. Have we gotten so comfortable with acting out the charade, trying to pull the wool over God's eyes, that we still aren't even honest with ourselves, let alone Him? If this sounds like you this morning, sounds like something you've been struggling with, now is the time for honesty with God. And honesty with us, with a, with a family of believers who are willing to stand with you through your trial, and we know that God is faithful and just to stand with you as well. No more pretending. No more fancy, elaborate plays in front of everybody else and God that would win an Academy Award. True, real honesty. Amen. If there's something that we can do for you this morning, a struggle or trial that you're going through, if we can pray with you, surround you with support and love, or if there's one here who's yet to become a child of God, be washed in baptism, uh, if there's something we can do for you and with you, would you please come as we stand and sing? I am my Lord.